So what I want to do in this video is just talk about a few paintings I like. It's not to give an exhaustive or well-researched account on a particular artist's biography. This is mostly going to be a mix of things I remember from art history five years ago and Wikipedia. So Edvard Munch lived 1863 to 1944. He was Norwegian, but he wasn't super localized. He traveled back and forth to Paris and Berlin. So he's pretty with it in the international arts community. Okay, so this first painting is Inger on the Beach, or Sumernacht, painted 1889. Before painting this, Munch did a series of studies between 9 and 11 p.m. to better understand the colors of Norway's summer's nights. This is the earliest painting that I can find that really starts to show Munch's style. This is the first painting of his that I really like. Munch's paintings sometimes express a turbulent relationship with his family history. His mother and one of his sisters died of tuberculosis, and his father was overbearingly pious. Munch wrote, My father was temperamentally nervous and obsessively religious to the point of psychoneurosis. From him I inherited the seeds of madness. The angels of fear, sorrow, and death stood by my side since the day I was born. Also, one of his sisters was declared mentally ill at an early age, so he uses these themes of madness and sickness and death over and over again. Uh, he also wrote, I inherited two of mankind's most frightful enemies, the heritage of consumption and insanity. But before we get into all that, check out this modeling of the rocks here and compare them to Melancholy from 1891, and then also this other version of Melancholy from 92. He painted Melancholy a few times from 91 to 96 in oils as well as woodcuts. The 92 version is my favorite. I love how he handles the large seaside stones. He has a real affection for them. I read somewhere that he felt they had a spirit to them that compared to living creatures. I also wanted to throw in Shore with the Red House from 1904, which admittedly is a little underwhelming, but the rocks are handled really exceptionally. The next painting I want to look at is Evening on Carl Johan Street, painted 1892. Uh, classic Munch faces on the pedestrians. The composition is really weird. It keeps the eye moving in a circular motion, which is generally good, but something's wrong with it. Like it makes your eye move too quickly around or in the wrong direction or something. It makes me a little bit seasick to look at it. Uh, compare the figures to Anxiety from 1894. The faces are really great here. I love the deep, deep saturation. The green reminds me of Toulouse Lautrec, of course, who was painting around the same time period. Another great green face painting is Jealousy from 1907. I really love the symbolist use of color in the faces. Uh, he also did another version of Jealousy in 1895, a little bit more famous. Next, let's look at Madonna from around 1895 and the Vampire from the same time period. There's a few versions of each. In the lithograph of Madonna, there's a fetus in the corner, and it has this great sperm border. The real title of the vampire painting is Love and Pain. About both of these, Munch had written that they were about a pretty simple, basic sexuality. He had said, Love and Pain is just an image of a woman kissing a man on the neck. Madonna is just a straightforward expression about feminine sexuality. Both of these paintings have acquired this interpretation over the years that's really female negative. In Madonna, the interpretation goes, Munch shows that women's sexuality is so powerful that it overwhelms and corrupts. Her sexuality becomes an idol that men ruin themselves worshipping. The vampire is the same thing, obviously. Also worth comparing are the Madonna and the day after, 1894-95. This is Puberty from 1895. This is my favorite Munch painting. When I was in college, I had an art history teacher who also worked as a curator who said if she ever got to curate a Munch show, she'd face this painting to stare at this painting, self-portrait in Hell, 1903. I imagine Munch got some of the energy from this painting from childhood experiences of watching his sisters go through puberty. I've heard anecdotally from other men that this is a heady, formative experience watching these glimpses of female sexuality and physicality that are still mostly being hidden from you. 
So this painting is kind of creepy. Um, I don't think that ha it has anything to do with male sexual desire. Um, I would say that this is definitely painted through the lens of the male gaze, but it reads more as an expression of like mysterious feminine energy than um, sexual desire. In the painting, The Three Stages of the Woman's Sphinx from 1895, we see further explorations of women using the symbolism of the maiden mother crone triad. Interesting, interestingly, here the crone is paired with a male figure and both appear to be in mourning. The red flower that grows between them can also be seen in Jealousy, um, the version from 95, and Separation, painted in 96. Compare also the use of red in ashes from 1895 and the Dance of Life painted in 1900. The Dance of Life also shows the maiden mother crone symbology. The man dancing with the woman in red is representative of Munch himself and the woman is his lover. The shape of the moon and its reflection makes a column-like lowercase i shape, which can also be found in the voice and the lady from the sea. Now let's look at some other later paintings, um, starting with The Man Plowing with a White Horse, painted in 1919. By this time, Munch seems to be more interested in beauty than strong, symbolist painting about despair. It's not my favorite period for him, but these are still beautiful paintings, even if they are a bit overshadowed by his earlier work. Um, I think the color in The Man Plowing is absolutely perfect. Also compare it to Horses from 1916. Here's the yellow log. Um, this painting always reminds me of Mantegna's lamentation over the dead Christ because of the deep yellow and the receding perspective. Um, Munch also did a yellow Christ himself. Um, it's called Golgotha from 1900. Uh, also compare to the yellow Christ by Gauguin, crucifixion by Nold, white crucifixion by Chagall, and the much later piss Christ by Serrano. Lastly, I wanted to end with these three versions of the sun painted between 1909 and 1912. I don't really have any analysis for these. I just like them.